welcome you all to the vision board uh, conversation uh, series uh, so under this initiative every week uh, we bring uh, uh, marketing leaders from different uh, business domain uh, different segment who come share their experience with our community members who are basically from the, the smbs and startup uh, organization and going through a certain transition so our objective is to create a platform where they can get all necessary information knowledge uh, from the growth marketer who already spent a decade into the space and eventually they can apply into their day to day life so today uh, we have uh, you know uh, mr pratik senior director marketing and uh, interesting part is that he is also you know part of different uh, startup mentorship program and i'm sure that today we know that uh, you know there will be a separate section where we're going to specifically discussing about the startup ecosystem in india uh, so pratik uh, you know that uh, the one question that we ask uh, you know that everyone that we begin with that you spend a decade you know in this uh, you know the corporate side and b2b marketing side you started your you know career with uh, i think a business application consultant and now you know you're holding you know a senior leadership role uh, at sap i'm sure that you know there are lots of ups and downs uh, you know there are you know some learnings uh and uh, some what the success mantras you know basically that uh, uh, you know that you want to share with the community oh absolutely and the first of all thanks so much for having me the entire effort i must compliment you and your team and then here to uh, the kind of uh, you know effort that you are doing in this uh, um, you know for the fraternity i think it's commendable it's absolutely commendable and i'm it's um, such a honor for me as a student of marketer to be actually here contributing in my own little way so uh yeah your question is um i think yes a uh, lot of people asked me this question like you started your journey as a consultant and i've gone through different career changes but then why marketing and i think i would uh you know for me marketing is like yoga uh for business mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah, and yeah. uh you know and let me explain it a bit maybe just in a minute right as Uh, see, as yoga is for a human, right? What it does, it basically is. It said it's a unification of mind, body, and soul, right? So it's marketing. Now, marketing is the unification of business strategy, which is your mind. It's your body, which is your momentum and marketing execution, market execution that you do, right? Which is uh, the body and soul, which is about creativity and innovation. So I think this is the only role which actually brings these three aspects all together so beautifully. in a balanced manner and i think that's what i uh, personally uh, really love about uh, marketing um mm -hmm. yeah so it is it is absolutely uh, that and the other aspects uh, that i would uh, want to talk about is you know to to a marketers uh, that are listening to this is that the other important aspect when you do yoga is your you know you keep your north star as divine mostly yeah, yeah? that's the here your divine is your customer Right. Exactly. So I think I think it's so it's it's a beautiful parallel that I draw for for myself to really you know when I whenever I'm in a mix or fix or whenever I need some sort of, and I need to get back to the basics uh, look my look at the problem from thirty thousand feet this is the mantra that I use really to look at okay these are the three aspects which needs to be unified in certain way and now then starts thinking about the problem and how do I solve it keeping north star which is your customer in mind so uh, that's uh, that's. my properly the philosophy if you can call it for uh, yeah. the way i understand marketing yeah so you know the yoga part really that you know that you know that angle uh, into marketing is really interesting uh, so but, you know you mentioned that you know you you been through this you know entire journey you spent decade so but how do you see that uh, especially in the b2b marketing you know that is evolving uh, mm -hmm. especially you know that earlier i believe that uh, um you know the b2b market is all about the events and you know basic very very technical level of engagement but now we see it has evolved a lot so what's your point of view i think uh, it's 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 because the shift in the north star <laughs> you know which yeah, is yeah, the customer yeah, yeah exactly the, yeah and, and that's where the real alignment happens yeah. you know so if you really see the your customers behavior and the way it has evolved and changed um over a period of time it's it's tremendous customers have moved uh, are they more empowered now earlier there was a time when customer used to depend on vendors to inspire them to educate them to bring the knowledge that they need to be able to make a right decision for the organizations but that's no more the case anymore 70% of our decisions when we engage 
yeah. with our customers is already done. We know that, right? We all know that as marketers, which means so that that kind of demands and demands a lot of change in the way we operate and engage with our customers today as well. Exactly. So uh, of course there were these uh, events and other kind of activities that were relevant and they're still relevant to a great extent right now, yeah. but they, they in, the, in, the, in the entire buyer's journey, they have their place yeah. now, right? Yeah. They are, uh, so, uh, yeah, so I think that's how, that's why it has evolved. Content has started playing a very crucial role in the whole uh, uh, journey now. Uh, engagement on digital, of course. So uh, making yourself available, available when a customer needs you, right, is, is so, so important, right? And be able to then take the customer through that journey, nurture the entire need in a way. Uh, I think that's that's very important for us yeah. as marketers to be able to align. And uh, so I think that's that's the reason why it is changing. And yes, it, it has evolved a lot. You know, our, the budgets, the way it were earlier for us in terms of um, this. And of course, COVID has act, acted as a catalyst as well there, yeah. you know, in a, in a great extent. Mm-hmm. COVID has mm-hmm. kind of, you know, uh, com- it's uh, it's now 100% digital in that sense, right? Even um and and uh, and the content as i said earlier has uh, now attained even more importance because it's the, the space itself is so crowded so how do you differentiate yourself and that's right. where the cre- right. that's where the creativity aspects uh, come in right that how creative you are about taking your message and what's your differentiators how you are engaging with the customer yeah yeah uh, before you know that uh, the customer uh, makes up their mind of which product they want to buy they've already gone through maybe, you know, that maybe 12 to 15 different phases of the journey. And it's better that, you know, how we can associate in the beginning rather at the end that was already has made up their mind. So how important do you feel the organization or the marketing leader should empower their employees to face the failure? And uh, so that, you know, they can think beyond and they don't get stuck to the tried and tested method because that is not going to work nowadays. Is right? It's completely digital. Digitally, as you mentioned, it's completely crowded. You can't uh, just apply what you know worked maybe five years back. So marketing leaders they are playing a play very very critical role, uh, you know, in this space. So what's your you know point of view? I think yeah, absolutely. I think there's something that you could learn from the, the way the startups operate. I engage with a lot of startups and I get a lot of opportunity to learn from them. I think it's not about uh, the fear of failure. It's about failing smart, right? And I think that's the word. Uh, and and today, if you compare the world, the world is digital now, right? And uh, and that's there are the tools available. Compare it with okay, let's look at cameras. You know, mm-hmm. there was a time where you have to have those reels and failing in those and having not the right shot. I, I I do a bit of photography and started with that Yashica camera, which used yeah. to have a reel, you know, and 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 it was very expensive to make mm-hmm. uh, mistakes with that, yeah. right? But today you can take hundred shots and figure out okay which are the ten best out of it mm-hmm. which you could really take out. So I think that's the so the amount of testing that you can do about with your messaging the A/B testing. I think that's the cost of failure has drastically come down now, and there's uh, you could get quick responses. And, and I think it's it's about feeling smart, ability to do as many tests, small tests as possible, get your messaging right, and then really scaling it out and investing heavily in what you think is going is working for your customers. So I think the world has shifted and it's, it's to the advantage of the market. It's unfortunate that some of our markets are still, uh, uh, you know, we are uh, bounding ourselves with our traditional mindsets and aren't able to leverage what is available. Exactly, right. exactly, exactly. Completely agree. Uh, uh, so, you know, failing smart, okay, as I know that, uh, uh, now the failing smart, so uh, can you give some, you know, real life experience that you face like one of your campaign that uh, you wish that, you know, uh, done really, you know, that well. But if you want to do, redo that, you know, engagement altogether. Uh, so what are the you know changes that you, you know, that you would have brought into this overall? I, I think I would possibly do that in the early years of as a marketer when I was, and I got in. And, you know, there are, there were a lot of campaigns that I was running. I was obviously engaged in, but. There again, I was uh, I realized which is the mistake a lot of uh, you know young marketers do make is uh, where do you place yourself in the whole business right? And if you're placing yourself just responsible for generating leads for sales, that's mm-hmm. where you get it wrong uh, most of the time. And that's what I actually did was possibly was the sole purpose as a marketer when I started, uh, and and that's where there was some bit of a dissonance between the business and uh, the marketing function that I used to lead. But uh, 
it, it, at that point of time, I thought it was uh, that I'm doing absolutely the right things which the market is supposed to do. So I think that's the, you know, I would probably go back and change a lot there, the way uh, I used to operate earlier. And mm-hmm. I think that's, uh, <laughs> I don't know, that's the place I think I would say. I would not have uh, wanted to, I would probably used to invest a lot in tele. Uh, rather than mm. actually because it was all about lead generation, getting yeah. the pipeline, looking that, you know, so we get, uh, you, you make not your customer, but your metric that you kind of operate on your North Star. And that's where you start getting it wrong yeah. overall. So yeah. I, I think that those are some of the mistakes I made. I'd like to yeah. go back and redo them again if I get an opportunity. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I'm just telling you most of the B2B market here, right? Like, you know, my yeah. next question is around that only that, you know, yeah. uh, how to choose between, you know, that uh, short term versus long term goals. Uh, yeah. You know, that uh, because short term, maybe there's a pressure from the business that, you know, uh, they need a support in terms of acquiring new customer or the geo expansion, so on and so forth. But it's uh-huh. a role of the marketing, you know, the team to think uh, beyond yeah. that, uh, you know, uh, lead gen or demand gen kind of a stuff. Definitely, uh, I call that, you know, B2B market is the extended arm of, you know, that sales. But at the same time, uh, you know, you know, market here, they put the, you know, they should put the owners that, okay, we are the custodian of the brand. So uh, we can't just go ahead and drive those technical demand in. So and there's a major challenge here uh, for mm -hmm. all between market here like us. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in fact, you said it, right? Uh, This is, uh, marketing is, I believe, is the most important function in an organization after sales, right? In that sense, right? Because sales keep the... Uh, you know, the bread, the, they are the owners of the bread. But in terms of how do you uh, perceive marketing as a function within the organization has two parts to it. One is how do you perceive it yourself and how organization perceives marketing as a function. Mm-hmm. Now, interestingly, if you see, uh, there are three parts of an organization as well, right? Front office, mid office, back office. For back office, you have a clear leader in form of a CFO. Yeah. In mid office, you have a COO as an uh, clear in charge of somebody who's owning it. But if you look at front office, you'd realize that it is fragmented. Yeah. Today, right. And that is where I think I would say a marketing has an opportunity to take the leadership to be that front office for your customer. Now, mm-hmm. if it is only an arm of supporting sales, then that's what custom customer would perceive. Now it's an interesting thing. I think them probably you should study it. I'm trying to myself because in the organizations where they perceive marketing as just as a, 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 a demand generation engine, mm-hmm. you'd realize that custom customers have a similar perception about that organization. That organization is more looked at as a sales driven organization than really focused towards customers interests and values. So I think that's where, you know, how you, uh, play yeah. with marketing and how do you define the role of marketing is very important. The second aspect which I talked about is from an organ. Now this is something which an organization leadership has to define, right? So if an SMB leader is listening today, here, I would urge you to think of marketing as more strategic than mm-hmm. just a you know the, uh, uh, and it, uh, yeah, it's a strategic lever than just an engine. And second, secondly, also the blame goes to the marketers and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Because yeah. today to uh, for us, like I go back to the initial days, I would probably look at my metrics and say, what's my success looking like, right? Mm-hmm. And my success was to basically fill in that pipe, use, make sure that there is a forex coverage to the numbers that is required and I'm home, right? But that's what, mm-hmm. because there's a fundamental attribution issues to all the other aspects that you look at, right? In terms of brand content and other things that you need to do to uh, mm-hmm. so it's very easy to measure and 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 today we have tools to measure them you know the share of yeah. voice etc but I, at that time they weren't you were dependent on crm to uh, mm-hmm. determine how successful you are and those tools deals uh, those tools used to give out uh, the number of leads and opportunities as the only measure right so mm-hmm. i think that's where we had a challenge earlier it's mm-hmm. no more a challenge as far as tools are concerned and i think uh, of course a marketer needs to evolve very quickly um, yeah, that, to... uh, very, very, very well said, uh, Pratik, that, you know, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's not only market here that, you know, even the business owner, the founder of, you know, that SMB and startup, they should realize, uh, you know, that uh, because, you know, see, marketing get the face of the organization, the way they will behave, customer will, you know, there's very, you know, that interesting that you have, you know, put across this point. Now, uh, on the same context, uh, you know, that we're also seeing that, uh, 
technology is playing, playing a very, very critical role. You know, that from last two to three years, suddenly we can see so many ad tech, martech solutions are, you know, coming into the space. And, uh, and there's a new thing is called blockchain. Now in this yeah. year, we're seeing that, okay, earlier we used to relate blockchain with the BFSI mostly, but now this technology is coming to the marketing part. So can you just share some of some thoughts, you know, that what's, how do you perceive this, but this technology can, you know, impact uh, the marketing uh, broadly? Uh, very interesting, Adam. And I think marketing is, the way it is evolving, I think it's very important for us to keep ourselves um, mm -hmm completely updated on what's happening. Unfortunately, I haven't spent too much on this one, but I know for sure two things here. One is this blockchain, uh, you know, the way it is now coming in marketing, it's going to solve for the trust deficit that is developing between brands and the consumers, right? In terms of uh, the data privacy and all those issues that exist mm -hmm. right now. So the, the consent, uh, the ability to, uh, for marketers to be able to engage better with the customers, building back that trust. I think this, this, is, uh, be, this will be a game changer. And the faster it, the, we are able to adopt it and faster there, I know that there are, are a lot of, uh, you know, organizations who started building the market around blockchain. Um, it's, it's now up to us to really start adopting those, uh, in our communication. So I, I think it's, it's a very important move. And I also believe that, uh, the deep tech like AI blockchain mm -hmm. others would slowly become quite integral, uh, to the way we operate in the near future. So that's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. But at the same time, Pratik, you know, that, uh, personally that I feel that technology is an enabler. They can bring the agility, productivity, you know, that, uh, you know, some transparency, you know, into the data that we generally, you know, that uh, extract from the, any campaign. But end of the day that, uh, you know, I, I, I believe that you also agree that we're interacting with the human being, that our customer, they're the human at the end of the day. Uh, we, will, like, you know, we also keep in mind that how creative, you know, we are in terms mm. of the narratives, uh, you know, what kind of message that they're using, how different way that we are, like if it's the B2C, you know, is a you know B2C they can use the different media like TV, commercials and all to build the emotional connect. But yeah. if you the B2B business is all about the relation. So therefore there's a need to build the emotional connect with the, my, my customer also. That Indeed. how you know that you know the technology and the creativity, how this, you know, we are going to you know those, you know, we're going to uh, you know match with each other so that uh we're and then the end of the day we are going to you know, achieve the whatever objective that you define for the organization. Yeah, I, I think it's an important aspect, right? Like, as I said, you know, creativity is uh, an important element of uh, what as a marketer, you know, and we have to constantly ensure that we are engaging with our customer in a meaningful way, understanding that there is a human on this side and he's like, you know, so... Uh, I'd, I'd give an example of a campaign that we, uh, you know, to mm -hmm. just to explain what, um, uh, so there was a challenge where we were trying to, of course, help customers understand the power of digital transformation and what it can do to the organization. Now, if you see, this was basically translating into a long, boring presentation set time for the customers, of course, and it has to cover the length of breadth of business to technology, the very lengthy yeah. presentations, etc. So we wanted to convert it into an experiential Kind of an experience right so we partnered with an organization to create a, a, a kind of a business simulation game on our technology platform to be able to get that experience out right so they were virtually running an organization for a quarter in a gamified mm -hmm. manner we created a live business league where 80 organization participated competed with each other and oh, and it was absolutely and they were using that tool which is, was our technology in the center to compete mm -hmm. And ah, okay. actually they were running an organization to see who is more prof profitable and who has got the maximum market share in that quarter of running business where every day act was actually one minute, right? Ah, so ah, in the pressure yeah. of that uh, business, you are, you are looking at the dashboard and there were uh, multiple functions within the organizations who were participating from CFOs to head of operations to marketing. So they, mm -hmm. they got to play their role in an intense manner for about mm -hmm. one and a half hours uh, of, of a league and yeah. it was it, it was very exciting to see the passion which came out and finally they ended up getting the experience of what it actually means what digital, trans digital transformation actually means for the organization and what it's like 
to run an organization which is completely transformed in that sense right yeah. so i'm saying that so this is just an example of how creatively you could actually take a message which seems to be quite boring lengthy and make it exciting for the for the mm-hmm. customers and consumers so absolutely creativity yeah. innovation is, yes uh, how very, we can very merge both technology and creativity together to make it interesting for our customer and also that you know how innovative way we can you know share our narrative and now you know let's come to a very interesting section which is like our startup so so every in india every second person is talking about the startup right there's so many you know that uh, funding is every now and then even yeah. this covid time uh, the huge funding is happening uh, now you know that like i i can say like 15 20 years back it used to be turbo that you know you're leaving your job and starting your you know own organization you don't know how the future look like but do you think you know that uh, mindset is uh, changing now the uh, people are more risk taker i know absolutely and unicorns uh, are to be blamed for that i was going through a report some time ago and uh, i think they their uh, combined value market valuation right now is about 240 billion right so this mm. this is huge right yeah. i think uh, so so absolutely this this mindset of uh, is if there is a shift towards startups i think if i if you talk to youngsters their aspiration is to yeah. either start a startup or join a startup so i think there is uh, there is a lot happening in this space absolutely yes 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 okay so now you know i think in the special in the startup there are two side of the coin one is that uh, you know uh, you know there are unicorns there are so many unicorns are coming up but at the other side that you know there are close to 90% startups they fail within a year so and you are a part of different startup mentorship program so what's your experience whether it's an idea or the execution or both so how do you see that you know the young entrepreneur you know that how they should plan you know their thoughts before they then they jumping into this you know this bandwagon uh, i don't know i always say idea any idea is as good as its execution yeah you know mm. otherwise you have you have mm. it's you, you have plenty of ideas if yes. if you are thinking about something don't think it's unique mm. you know the, yes, there exactly. there are hundreds and thousands of people actually thinking about yes. it what differentiates you is is how you execute on it mm. so i think it's uh, uh, absolutely it's it's both if you ask me it's both yeah okay yeah great so pratik we also were rapid fire like you know coffee with karan so <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so i know there are a couple of you know the quick you know the questions that uh, your top 3 marketing tips for sme so one is as a ceo even if you don't have a full time marketing uh, organization dedicate one day of a week wear a cmo hat right is do that second is uh, think of marketing as a strategic lever right engage and even if you it's not about investment in the budget that you allocate it's about how you engage it with your customers right and uh, use that to build a marketing function uh, mm. correct so uh, use social platforms use um, you know and be out there the third important thing is that make sure that your back end is aligned to what you're opening up right and in social media it's very easy sometimes for smbs to open up a social media uh, engagement platform but really don't know how to manage it how to manage you know, customer queries in whatever you know so you get a lot of feedback inputs uh, and queries on the platform if you're not responsive enough your brand takes a hit so mm-hmm. so it's so while it is right now available it doesn't cost much as well so you can invest in it but invest in it carefully and ensure that you have a back end engines in place to be able to uh, you know sustain that and use it to build the plan otherwise the the impact could be counterproductive and detrimental to the brand itself if you do it yeah uh, and uh, uh, the one skill that you know every marketer that you feel you know uh, you know needs to have i think it's uh, empathy it starts with from there uh yeah understanding yeah. of customers and your favorite b2c and b2b brand in terms of marketing that in the top of the mind is the two brands okay. that i um okay i'll uh, b2c would be amul uh, and b2b yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i think lo- a lot of marketers love that brand and yeah. uh, the second one b2b uh, b would be my own brand which i did <laughs> for which is sm which is sap yeah yeah yeah, yeah i agree 
Okay, so now we know that, uh, uh, especially you know, for the you know that our community members that, uh, as you mentioned in the beginning, uh, you know they are the all you know aspiring marketeers. So they just started their marketing, you know that um, you know, career. You know, uh, so uh, so one question that every time you know that uh, we get from this community that, I you know how we can make it to the you know top management of a global brands. What are the key mm-hmm. aspects that you know uh, we should keep in our mind? Yeah. I think I covered that, right? The key aspects yeah. that you cover in, in your growth journey is at different mm-hmm. levels. Like, you know, I go back to what, how I started uh, yeah. the session where marketing, defining marketing as a yoga, there are three aspects, constantly work on those three. I think that's the important aspect at, at whatever role you are playing, one aspect could be more important than the other, but you can't ignore the other three. And mm-hmm. I'll just, your, your business strategy, why, which is why your business exists, right? That's the mm-hmm. why of your business. So uh, keep an eye on that, ensure that you're using that effectively in your marketing communication. Secondly, uh, the execution, right? The different mm-hmm. mechanism, the tools, mm-hmm. technologies that are coming to keep you agile. That's very important. Keep yourself abreast on what's happening around there. And finally, creativity and innovation. All right. Yeah. Got yeah. Keep, keep, I, I think these are the three important aspects. I feel any marketer, in my personal opinion, if you if you are constantly developing on these three aspects, your growth journey is assured. Great. So, my Pratik, my last question is that: um, uh, Do you think uh, an MBA degree is important uh, to be a good marketer? I think yes, it is. It is essential for two aspects in in two areas. One is, of course, it opens up and broadens your mindset yeah. it, and, and secondly you know it uh you you get a lot of a lot to think about right and second thing is uh second aspect of it is that of course the connects and uh, that you are able to make while you are at it right yes. which is basically yeah. sharing of experience sharing of uh what others are doing uh, i think this is this is very important for marketers there and 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 I think I would also compliment you for creating a community like that right now where, you know, marketers like us can actually participate and learn from each other. So I think that's what an MBA degree kind of provides there as a crash course in a capsule. So and it's, yeah. I feel that it's, that's important. That's important. Okay. So, uh, so uh, um, with this note, we're going to close this conversation. And uh, again, I'd like to thank you for your time. You've taken a time on this weekend and sharing your views, notes with our audience that were, Really looking forward to learn from the you know that uh, marketing leaders like you, and uh, yeah. So you know next time maybe again we're going to come up with some new you know that uh, ask from our community members, and again we'll you know that request you to share your time with the community, and take this initiative uh, forward. Uh, thank you, Pradeep. Again, uh, have a nice day, and uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Arindam. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having. Me. Thank you.